If you are watching this video, you might already be considering volunteer work with Designability, but you likely want some more information. The following video will answer many of your questions and will help you make the decision as to whether or not Designability is right for you. Within all of our lifetimes, we will likely face disability in some form. Currently, in Canada, there are almost 4 million working-aged Canadians who are legally disabled. That's more than the population of Toronto and Vancouver combined, and that number doesn't begin to cover the rapidly growing senior population. For many of these Canadians, everyday tasks can become daunting or even impossible. That's where designability comes in. This program is all about finding solutions, and every solution is a response to a problem. In this case, the problem is the physical restrictions brought on by various disabilities that many people face on a daily basis. Designability is all about using volunteers' unique perspectives and skills to create practical solutions to overcome these restrictions and to help raise a fellow human's quality of living. Before we dive into interviews and information, let's go back a bit and look at the origins of the program. Designability is part of a larger non-profit organization known as March of Dimes Canada, which was started in 1949 as a means of raising money to combat the polio epidemic. This organization was instrumental in the development of the polio vaccine and subsequently they were able to turn their focus to helping people with a myriad of other physical disabilities. In 1997, March of Dimes started the first chapter of Designability. This chapter was chaired by Elaine Darling, a volunteer industrial designer and advocate for universal design. Elaine wanted to use her skills to develop custom, low-cost solutions to assist physically limited individuals. One of the program's earliest supporters was the former March of Dimes Canada president, Andrea Spindle. This program began almost 20 years ago when I had the pleasure of speaking to a friend and neighbor who's an industrial designer and she told me about the opportunity of engaging people as volunteers, people who are technologists, engineers, designers, occupational therapists, builders, creators, techies who might help create solutions for people who have disabilities devices that we could either create or modify to aid people in their tasks of daily living. If building devices sounds like the job for you, you should have a knowledge of materials and construction, access to a workshop, and experience in the use of tools and fabrication. Um, devices are generally unique one-offs, but sometimes one solution can be available to someone with a similar problem. We're interested in having students involved, volunteers from different professions, whether engineering or technology or carpentry. Healthcare professionals are very important in identifying people who could benefit. The joy of designability is um, you're able to use your kind of creative thinking and your hands and your materials uh, to come up with um, solutions that help people live independently. Every time we get to help a person um, achieve more independence or be able to do an activity that they used to be able to do and now for whatever reason uh, they faced a barrier and they can't, enabling them to do that is very personally rewarding. So yeah, problem solving is just part of the game. The solution is the satisfaction. These solutions never come from one individual. Um, so I think the, that's the big advantage is working as a team and the we coming together and, and providing a solution. With Eileen being an OT, she can look at the client and see the client's needs and limitations. I often come up with an idea and she'll say no because that'll still bother her shoulder. Therefore, we change the idea and between the two of us, we generally come up with a solution, a solution that, yeah, that works that for works. the person. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's teamwork. You know how they well. say two heads is better than one? I think we're a perfect, perfect <laughs> example of that one. Even if one is a cabbage. <laughs> I like to say we have some people who like to work with uh, a sewer pipe and others who like to work with electronics and others who like to work with metal or plastic or wood. So the solution is very individual to the team member who gets assigned the case. As long as it's not rocket science and I don't build rockets. That's why, I, that's why I stick to the simple, I'll lift your butt up and down off the toilet seat. Or build your bed that your parents will be comfortable with, with you in it, 
and everybody's safe and, and everybody can sleep. Most people spend an awful long time in their life without their name on something. I put a name on somebody's bed, one out of two of the parents will be in tears. They consider it thoughtful. Well, okay, that's, that's easy to do. But that's, that's a challenge from the point of view of make sure you got the right letters and then figure out how many routers is it going to take to, to do a project like that. And that's, what, that's the part that I'm interested in. With my background as an interior designer, I'm not the most technical person. I've been helping Elaine a lot with um, organizing the project's files, like right now with the volunteer files and those type of things. Just keeping everything up to date so everybody's on the same page. And basically what we're working on is to have like one database that everybody can access. In my early days in this country, I was uh, in need in a, in a wheelchair and they just gave me one for me to use. And I felt, wow, I got to give back to this uh, good organization that helped me and made a difference in my life. The product that we, uh, we make is also going to make a difference in people's life. Another way you can help out as a volunteer is by spreading the word about designability. There are so many people that could benefit from the program who simply aren't aware that it exists. You can help by marketing the program in local communities by distributing material and participating in meetings, events, and trade shows. Some of the consumers are themselves designers of the solutions. We just need to help them, engage with them, help them find the materials they need, and help them tell the designers how it would work. For people who have uh, certain limitations, we see things different than people uh, who are able. There are things that people with disabilities will ask. It may not make sense to you as a designer or as, a, or as an engineer, but it does make a difference and make sense to us as people who are going to use the end product that you're going to make for us. I am, uh, I guess, a client of Designability. Tim here, my friend Tim. Uh, designed, uh, I'm an artist, and he designed a specially made easel for me because uh, I was finding that the easels in the stores weren't fitting me. You were uh, flexible, hmm. you were willing to listen to my ideas. My profession is human factors engineering and that's really to, to match uh, machines and, and equipment to people uh, and their needs just in general. And oh, I have to use their expertise, their knowledge, their wants in order to do this. So we have to work together. And the best way to do it is to come up with some ideas, try them out, find out what fails, and try again, and try again. I'd like to make one that attaches to your wheelchair. Yeah, that'd that would cool. be fun, wouldn't it? Yeah, then I could go and saw, and then I could do plain air stuff. Yes, that's right. Yeah, because <laughs> some really? of my friends do that now. You do that? Yeah. I've been introduced to it, but I can't do it. Okay. So I'll, I'll make something that clamps on here and can swivel out of the way so that you can get in and out, uh, yeah. but also you can use it. Yeah. Well, one of the um, antidotes to stress believe it or not, is volunteer work. And I really support the concept of volunteerism as a way to um, help yourself, but to help others at the same time. And I think we all uh, owe it to the world to, you know, to do something that can change the world. We're not, we're not passive. We, we shouldn't just treat ourselves as consumers. We should be doers and volunteers to, to problems. And if everybody did that, then the world would get better quicker. <laughs> Designing uh, devices and things for people who, for who there aren't commercially available solutions has been extremely, extremely gratifying. It's, it's, this program is amazing. I mean, you, you're doing something for somebody else, but you're getting something out of it because you have to obviously enjoy what you're doing or you wouldn't want to do it, right? So it's, it's kind of win-win on either side. You can do one project a year or you can do 20 projects a year. And literally we've done from that few to that many, I've done that from that few to that many over the years. And they can work it into their life whatever, at whatever level they want. I've learned from you and from others to be aware of accessibility issues and there are lots of them left untouched. We're working on 
Yeah. <laughs> Change the world, right? <laughs> you and me. <laughs> Designability has been looking into the future. The future is all about technology and we're looking at how we can adapt technology to uh, everyday projects, perhaps with um, 3D printers, um, using smart tablets. We started a little project called the Accessible Mobile Technology Initiative, which is introducing sophisticated apps to people with disabilities that enable them to access their environment or to have speech augmentation. Um, there may be a way that that can also supplement our designability project. Volunteers are encouraged to join a local chapter, but they can work independently if they meet the program requirements. I encourage everyone to give some thought to what you'd like to contribute and get involved with March of Dimes' designability program. Thank you.